Next, let's take a look at the e6s.py support file for example 6. It begins by defining a dictionary using curly brackets and setting for each of the file names 0.bmp, 1.bmp, and so on, those file names being associated with the arrow sprites in the sprites directory, it sets those strings as keys and as the value it sets the image itself. I load in the image in Pygame as shown and I use os.path.join to join the directory name sprites to the file name that's specified. That way if the user is on a PC or a Mac it'll choose the appropriate file joining connector. It's forward slash on one and re reverse slash on the other. I'm pretty sure. Next we define a new map. This is a list comprehension as before. We have save and load map using OS and JSON methods. Get indices is the same as before for converting a point that you've clicked, which is going to be a pixel value, into an index on the array. This function called lineInd returns a list of indices between two indices. That way, if you move the mouse rapidly, and if the program only picks up the point at the end and the point at the beginning, it'll still draw a shape all the way from one side to the other. Let's look at that control down here. Under Edit Map, I specify a global, Previous Press. If there's a previous location at which you've been holding down the mouse, then it finds a set of indices. INDS equals line end, previous press, and end. So it'll go ahead and get a list from your previous location to the current location. And then for each one, it'll set the value of the map either to a 0 or a 1, depending on whether you have the left mouse button or the right mouse button engaged. I use a global here so that it can remember the press from the previous frame when edit map was called. Okay, lastly we have a draw function. This one checks to see whether the data that's present in the map colors file is a tuple or not. This is because I'm drawing two maps here. One of those maps is a map of the terrain, which has a 0, 1, indicating a wall or open space. The other map that I've got, instead of being called map, is called p.md, and it's an attribute of the pathing object, and I called it md for map data. I know, great name, huh? And I supply it with information about the sprites to draw. Here, those sprites are strings instead of tuples. And so here, where it's trying to draw something, it doesn't know whether to draw a rectangle or a sprite. So it checks to see whether that data is a tuple, referring to a color, in which case it draws a rectangle of that color, or whether it's not a tuple, in which case it assumes it's a string, and pulls out that image that we stored in that dictionary way at the beginning. It pulls out that image and it blitz it to the screen. That's all it is. In the next video, We'll look at some really cool tricks that we've done with classes in our pathing program bug. See you next time.